Okay. This is called thermal diffusivity. This is called kinematic viscosity. This is called diffusion coefficient. Okay. Sometimes, I mean, if you look at it, it looks the same in terms of units. So therefore, people, people thought that they are somewhat similar. So they renamed all of this to be similar. So kinematic viscosity sometimes is called momentum diffusivity. And diffusion coefficient sometimes is called mass diffusivity. Okay? So they are the same. They are the same. And we have learned from energy part that if you take new or kinematic viscosity divided by thermal diffusivity, that becomes Cp mu over K. It has no unit. This is called Prandtl number, right? So if I do the same thing, all this has no unit, right? So if I take kinematic viscosity divided by mass diffusivity, it's supposed to have no unit as well. In uh, detail, it is viscosity divided by rho dAB. This is called Schmidt number. On the other hand, if I take alpha divided by dAB, you get K over rho CP dAB. This is called Lewis number. What does it mean? What does it, what do they represent? First of all, for Prandtl number, I told you that Prandtl number would appear every time you have momentum transport as well as energy transport together. So in the problem where you have convection, energy convection, you're supposed to be able to convert all the solution to be in terms of Prandtl number. Same thing applies. For Schmidt number, you will have, you see Schmidt number whenever you have momentum transport and mass transport all together. Right? Just like when you have flow of air sweeping all the perfume from the person to another person. In that case, you can convert all the solution into Schmidt number. Okay? And Lewis number would appear whenever you have energy transport together with mass transport. Of course, if you have everything all together, momentum, mass, energy, you can have all three all together. Okay? The Diffusion coefficient itself or diffusivity itself depends on temperature and pressure. Okay? For gas mixture, if you have high temperature or high pressure, I'm sorry, high temperature, diffusion coefficient 
supposed to be higher. Imagine close room, very hot, high temperature. You sit down there, and someone wear perfume. You're supposed to smell the perfume easily. Okay. If you cannot imagine, imagine like this: you get into a bus, the air condition of the bus is broken. It's hot weather. You sit in the front. Someone in the back take off the shoe. You can smell something, right? That's the effect of diffusivity. On the other hand, if you increase pressure, diffusivity for gas goes lower. Because when you increase pressure, molecule of gas condense together, come closer together. So in order for one another molecule to pass through it, it will be more difficult. So diffusivity would get lower as pressure is higher. For liquid mixture, again, as temperature is increased, diffusivity is increased. Okay. Now, diffusion coefficient or diffusivity itself here. I always put A B together. That's because it is not a function of PO species. It is characteristic properties of a pair of both A and B. So if you have diffusivity of perfume in air, there's supposed to be one value. If you change from perfume to maybe benzene or alcohol, then Diffusivity will be different. Okay. So remember, this is a properties of pair of species, not pure species. Now, From this equation, again, just like last time, we derive it from one dimensional system. Of course, in reality, when you use it, it can be applied to three dimensional. So in order, to, in order for us to convert one dimension equation into three dimensional equation, we use vector notation. So J A can be represented as vector. Okay? Supposed to equal to minus rho D A B. D omega A by D Y, when you turn into vector, you get del. Del omega A. That's fixed law for three dimensions. Okay. Any question for the moment? Now, I'd like to emphasize again that everything from that board up to here was obtained from experiment. There is no theory associated with it. Okay? From this board to the right, I'm going to talk about theory. In detail, if you have mixture like A, molecule of A together, molecules in gas or liquid can move freely. So each molecule should have its own velocity. It may not be equal. Some molecule may go 
high, I mean, go faster than the other. Okay? If you take the velocity, suppose you can measure velocity of each molecule, and then you can find average velocity. You can take VA to be average velocity of species A. Okay? Suppose you find the average velocity and you say that the, the average velocity goes in this direction. These two at atoms go in that direction with the velocity at roughly about this part, this much. Okay? Now, if I say that this direction is y direction, I can take this VA into VY. And perhaps this is x direction or z direction, then you can have VC as well. And of course, this is for A species, let's call this one VAY and this one VAZ. Okay? So VAY is supposed to be average velocity of species A in y direction. Now, if I have A and B together, now I have molecule of B together with A. Suppose B goes slower. You can find VB, the average velocity of B species, by counting velocity of B, measure velocity of all B species, and take the average. Okay? Then you can take them into Y direction. So B, VBY is average velocity of species B in Y direction. All right. Now, in this picture, if you disregard the color, if you just say that these are molecules, all of them are molecules. With its own velocity. So if you disregard species, you can say that right now you have seven atoms. These seven atoms move different at different speed. You can find average velocity of all seven atoms. Can you? You just take velocity of each of them and take the average. That's is called average velocity of the species, of the mixture. So this is mixture velocity. I use V. Okay? You can have mixture velocity in any direction. So of course you can take them into x, y, and z direction. So Vy is called mixture velocity in y direction. Okay?